what should you place inside of the infrastructure layer of the clean architecture? That's what we're going to answer in today's video. And I'm going to start by giving you a brief overview of what the infrastructure layer is and what purpose it serves inside of the clean architecture. And then I'm going to show you a practical example and we're going to take a look at an implementation of the infrastructure layer. The clean architecture is a domain centric approach where you place the domain of your problem system at the core of the architecture. One level above, you would have the application layer containing your use cases. The use cases could be implemented using service classes or mediator handlers, which I frequently use in my videos. On the outer layers of the architecture, we have the presentation layer and the layer that I'm going to focus on in this video, which is the infrastructure layer. You can see over here that the infrastructure layer is responsible for external services in the clean architecture, but let's try to explain what this actually means. The infrastructure layer resides above the application and the domain layers, and we can consider it on the same level as the presentation layer. However, the infrastructure layer is unique because it is responsible for implementing the abstractions that we define in the lower layers that pertain to working with external services. When I say external services, what I mean by this is that the infrastructure layer covers anything that has to do with databases, messaging, email providers, storage services, identity providers, and even trivial things like the current system time. This is probably enough for you to understand the role of the infrastructure layer in the clean architecture. So let's go over into the code and see some practical examples. I'm going to explain these concepts using the trainer sphere application, which is a modular monolith with three distinct modules, the users, training, and notifications modules. And all of these modules follow the clean architecture when it comes to their project structure. There's also a common folder that contains projects with a similar naming convention, for example, the application, infrastructure, and persistence projects. We can also map them to the clean architecture layers. However, these projects are more general in their nature, and they cover the cross-cutting concerns for my modular monolith implementation. If I open up the users module, and for example, let's start with the persistence project, one of the first things that you will see is the users database context. This is our implementation of the EF core database context class and it is specific to the users module. Something that you will see inside of a modular monolith is having a distinct schema in the database for each module. So in this case, I am configuring the users database context to have a default schema of users. We're going to use our database context to implement the repository interfaces. The iUser repository is defined inside of the domain layer. So this is our abstraction inside of the clean architecture. And then we have the concrete implementation, which is the user repository class, which lives inside of the persistence project. And this project belongs to the infrastructure layer. The implementation itself is very straightforward. I'm not going to dive into this, but it's important to know that we are respecting the dependency rule in the clean architecture that says that the lower layers of the architecture, such as the domain and the application layers, should define abstractions such as the iUser repository interface in this case, and the higher layers in the architecture, in this case, the infrastructure layer, will implement these abstractions. Other than the repositories, we're also going to have entity configurations. So for example, here is the configuration for our user entity. You can see I'm providing a specific name for the user table, some generic fluent configuration for EF core. Then I have some configuration for my relationships and any indexes that I want to define at the database level. We're also going to see EF core migrations inside of this project. At the start of this video, I showed you the clean architecture diagram that shows the infrastructure layer as a single component inside of the system. But in this example, I decided to split the responsibilities of the persistence and the infrastructure projects into distinct class libraries. So let's take a look what we have inside of the infrastructure project. For example, in the infrastructure project, I have the authorization folder that is responsible for implementing some authorization policies. In this case, I have an authorization requirement called the same user requirement. It basically implements resource-based authorization in my system, 
and make sure that the resource that the current user is trying to access also belongs to that specific user. Otherwise, we are going to fail this requirement and the user is going to get a 403 forbidden response. One more thing that you will see in my infrastructure project is, for example, background jobs. Here I have two background jobs for processing the inbox and the outbox messages. So let's take a look at the process inbox messages job. You can see in the execute method, we are fetching some messages from my inbox. The inbox pattern is very similar to the outbox pattern, which I talked about a few times on this channel already. And to give you a high level idea of how this works, is the inbox acts as a buffer for incoming messages from a message bus. Instead of handling the message at the same time that it is received, we're going to store this message inside of an inbox table. Then we're going to run a background job that's going to fetch any inbox messages that we need to process. And we're going to deserialize the message into an I integration event instance. Then we're going to handle our integration events one by one and finally store the results back into the inbox table, which is going to mark this inbox message as processed and is going to be skipped in the future runs of the process inbox messages job. The outbox messages job does something similar, except it works on the publishing side of the equation instead of the consuming side. We covered authorization and background jobs. Let's take a look at the item potence folder. And for example, I'm going to show you the integration event consumer. This is a generic class that implements the iConsumer interface from mass transit. This class allows me to implement a generic consumer type for my integration events. And what it's going to do is take in an incoming integration event, create an inbox message instance that's also going to contain the integration event serialized into a JSON string. And then it's just going to store this into my inbox table. I already showed you the background job that processes this table and this integration event consumer is what populates the inbox messages table in the database. You can also notice that the inbox messages table is scoped to the user schema because all of this belongs to a single module inside of our modular monolith. This covers the messaging aspect of the infrastructure layer. What about the identity provider folder? Well, inside of it, I have an identity provider service which only has a single method that allows me to check if a user with a given identity provider ID exists in the identity service. Now, in this case, the identity service that I'm using is Firebase, and I'm using the Firebase SDK to obtain the default instance of the Firebase off class, which allows me to get a user based on their ID, and then I can confirm if this user is null or not. Depending on what you are using for your identity provider, this implementation could be more or less complex. One more thing I want to show you is the service installers folder where I'm configuring my services with dependency injection. For example, here is the background job service installer. It's going to set up some options objects for my inbox and outbox messages jobs. And I'm also doing some assembly scanning to configure some more services with dependency injection. All of this is very specific to the user's module inside of my modular monolith but in the common folder under the persistence or the infrastructure projects you're going to see some other useful implementations for example here is a sql connection factory implementation that allows me to obtain a connection to my postgres database by creating a new mpg sql connection instance i can also define things like database interceptors for example here's an interceptor that's going to convert any domain event to outbox messages and in the infrastructure project inside of my common folder, here's an implementation for my event bus. This is an interface that's defined in the application layer, and it just has one method called publish async, and you can use it to publish an integration event. The event bus implementation itself uses mass transit by injecting the ibus instance, and then we're going to use this instance to publish the integration event and mass transit will take care of routing this to the appropriate consumers. So the high level idea behind the infrastructure layer is to have the application layer or the domain define abstractions like I'm doing in this case. For example, here is the I event bus abstraction inside of the application layer. This allows me to work with an event bus service without being coupled to the actual implementation. At runtime, I'm going to inject the appropriate implementation that lives in the infrastructure layer. And as I mentioned, you don't necessarily need to have 
a single infrastructure layer. In some cases, it might make sense to split the infrastructure layer into multiple projects, for example, into infrastructure, persistence. You could also have dedicated projects for messaging and authentication and authorization, but all of this still falls under the responsibility of the infrastructure layer in the clean architecture. If you want to learn what the application core of the clean architecture looks like, then take a look at this video next. Make sure to click the like and subscribe buttons under this video. And until next time, stay awesome.